In the last video, we talked about the airway innervation with respect to everything above the epiglottis. In this video, we're going to talk about airway innervation regarding everything below the epiglottis. And as you can see here, which we talked about in the last video, everything below the epiglottis, the sensory and motor function, is going to be governed by our cranial nerve 10, or our otherwise known as our vagus nerve. So just like we did with this first video, the, the previous video where we separated the an upper and lower portion of our airway with respect to the epiglottis, we're going to do the same thing with a region that is below our epiglottis, and that is going to be our vocal cords. We're going to draw a line bisecting our vocal cords. And that is going to help us understand the different innervations of our cranial nerve 10. So you can see our vocal cord is right over here. I'm just going to draw a border going across it. And then I'm just going to label this part here above cords. And then below it, below cords. Below cords. So we're going to come back to our illustration, but we're just going to make a quick diagram here. Our vagus nerve, our cranial nerve 10, splits into two different, two different branches. The superior laryngeal nerve and the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And as you can probably now guess, that is the big reason why I separated the vocal cords to above and below. Everything above the vocal cords will be dealt with by the superior laryngeal nerve and everything below our vocal cords is going to be dealt with by our recurrent laryngeal nerve. This is an oversimplification, but it's just something that is, uh, is good to use as a rule of thumb. So above cords, superior laryngeal nerve, below cords, our recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now our superior, if we're just dealing with above the cords, our superior laryngeal nerve is going to divide into two other categories. And, that, and two other branches, essentially. One branch is going to be providing sensation sensation to everything above the cords and one is going to be providing motor function motor function so our sensation branch is going to be called the internal the internal branch of our superior laryngeal nerve the motor branch is going to be called the external branch of our superior laryngeal nerve. So what's that going to look like? We can draw it right over here. So our superior laryngeal nerve is going to be both providing sensation as well as motor function to everything above the, above the uh, vocal cords. And to go back, our motor function, our motor function, one of the muscles that the external branch of our superior laryngeal nerve provides is to our cricothyroid muscles, which is basically a tensor of our vocal cords. So let's actually write that right over here. Crico thyroid, and then I'm going to write here, tensor. So what it does, the purpose of the cricothyroid is to close the vocal cords. And that is why it is a tensor. So we focused on what is going on above the cords. Now below the cords, we have our recurrent laryngeal nerve. Our recurrent laryngeal nerve is going to provide sensation and motor below the cords. So it doesn't have a 
it, it does not have a branch in and of itself, but we can just divide it into sensory, all sensation below our cords, and then our motor function is going to be all of the muscles of the larynx, all muscles of larynx. So let's draw that right over here. Our, our recurrent laryngeal nerve is going to be providing sensation to everything below the cords, and then it is also providing motor function to all of the muscles of the larynx. And again, that is with the exception of the cricothyroid muscle, which is a tensor. So let's focus on one particular muscle that the recurrent laryngeal nerve innervates. And this is going to be really important for the purposes of any injury that happens to our recurrent laryngeal nerve. So most notably, one of the muscles that our recurrent laryngeal nerve innervates, one of the motor, uh, motor functions it has, is to innervate the posterior, posterior cricoarytenoid muscles. Muscle. So this is a very important muscle because the purpose of this muscle is to abduct the vocal cords. It keeps, it keeps the cords open. So if you can imagine, if you have an injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve, if you have an injury to both sides of the recurrent laryngeal nerve, Essentially, what you're going to get is the cords are not going to be able to open, and you could have airway obstruction, and that is not good. So this thing, this muscle is very important, and it's good to know that it is supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So to quickly summarize, we'll get into uh, more about the tensors and the abductors and other videos, but just to quickly summarize, you can divide everything below the epiglottis by being above the cords or below the cords. Above the cords is supplied by our superior laryngeal nerve. Below the cords is supplied by our recurrent laryngeal nerves. We have two branches, the internal and external branch of our superior laryngeal nerve. The external provides motor sensation to our cricothyroid muscles, which is a tensor or a vocal cord closer. The recurrent laryngeal nerve provides sensation to everything below the cords, and it also provides motor to all of the muscles of the larynx except the cricothyroid and one of the most notable muscles that provides sensation provides motor function to is the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle which opens up our cords